Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. This is Julie with J of Grief Freedom. And it's been on my heart for a while to do a video on Revelation. I just wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to go with it and how I wanted to do it. And initially I was going to do this long series and try to explain it all, but it's like, and there's so much to it. It's just a huge book. So I just wanted to share a little bit of what I have found to be encouraging to me. It's helped me relax about the book and I've talked about it before a little bit I've talked a little bit about it before in a different video and it's just it's partly that uh, a large portion of the book of Revelation in my view is in chronological order and it's taken me years to like wrap my mind around it and see how that would work and I know there are things called asides. So an aside is where there's a, a picture shown, like a spiritual picture of the woman in heaven with the stars. And then she gives birth to a child and Satan tries to kill it. Obviously, those types of pictures throughout Revelation don't have a specific timeline. And if they do, God knows it. Um, but the way it's written is incredibly confusing. Some of those those sections, but in general, it's agreed which of those sections are considered an aside. That part, if you're wanting to look that up, that part is not too confusing, but I'm not going to mention to you every single instance that I think John is doing that. But the basics are the basics are that whenever there's a, a number, so let's say number one, seal number one, two, three, four. I believe those are given in, in num numerical order for a reason. I do believe they start. And then there are some uh, teachings that say that these are overlaid upon each other, all happening at the same time. Like the first seal is the same as the first bowl and the same as the first trumpet. And that, you know, for a long time I would take people's word on that, but it would just confuse me because I, I didn't understand. I was like, how can this be happening at the same time? I started to receive words from the Lord about a year or two ago, like specific ones. And in one of them, it said, a writer writes forth. And there are other prophets who have had prophecies that have a writer. They describe which writer is coming forth. One of the four writers, the four horsemen. I was reading today in Daniel. I thought it was neat. He was talking about how he, he heard, but he didn't understand. That was in Daniel 12, I believe. And that's the way I felt about Revelation, the prophecy that I received about the writer. I felt like I heard it, but I didn't understand, and I didn't get it. That was the beginning, part of the beginning of me trying to understand how this whole book can really fit together. And I had heard a lady say before that that the Lord gave his prophecies in order, but I didn't believe it because to me there are just so many problems with that. And I just spent the past year or so thinking on those problems, and I will share some of a little bit of what was what it was that caused me to trip up on that, but then be able to work through that. So one of the first uh, things that was difficult for me is at the at the end of the seven seals. I believe it's the seven seals. It talks about how the sky is ripped open. And for me, that was hard because I didn't understand how could the sky be ripped open and then we still have seven more trumpets and seven bowls to go. But then I started looking a little bit about the pole shift. People talk about the pole shift sometimes on their websites and what that would entail. And it's just so many odd things that can happen to the earth in that type of instance. So thinking about there being like, more access to sunlight and the sun being able to scorch, scorch people's skin because there was something ripped open in the heavens. Um, I I was able to like really think, okay, you know what? Maybe that's possible that, that it's opened and then the other judgments come. So then we have the seven trumpets. I think a lot of people get tripped up on what is physical and what is in the spiritual realm. Um, it talks in the trumpets about the, the locusts that come, and it says they could sting people. So I believe there's a demonic element to that, and there there's a physical element to that. 
It says they have a a leader. Their leader is is Abaddon or something like that. Um, so I believe that there's a you know those those creatures that are allowed to fly around and sting people. It's not random, like it's physical, but they also could be demon possessed. I believe they are demon possessed. So you have the physical meeting the spiritual at the same time. So, and then another problem that I had that was difficult for me was getting to the seventh trumpet and then it gets ready for the bowls of wrath. A lot of people like to do their timeline thinking that the seven seals, the trumpets, and the bowls are all evenly spaced out. Uh, however, I heard from Elizabeth Marie with Lettering 333, she heard from the word the Lord overlap. So things happening close to the same time. Um, it's traditionally agreed the seventh seal overlaps with the first trumpet and the seventh trumpet with the first bowl. The way she said it made it sound like there are multiple pictures in Revelation that are happening at the same time. I'd like to explain that if you think of a famine, it doesn't start all at once. It's like a slow growing until there's a full blown famine. So I, I had to take a look at the seventh trumpet in Revelation 11. It says, 1115, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. I looked up the word become, are become, because I believe that this was just a, it's an opening for these last bowls of wrath to come down. It will happen quickly, I believe. Um, these bowls, when they are opened, when they're poured out, the word are become, I looked that up. To double check what it means. And if you don't have eSword, it's a pretty cool tool that you can use to double check the King James Version of the Bible and what it says and what the words say. So that word are become in Greek is G1096, and the G is for Greek. And the definition is to cause to be, that is, to become or come into being. I was encouraged by reading that definition. It's coming into being this kingdom. So as it's coming into being, I believe these seven bowls are being poured out. So that was encouraging to me to read and to look at. And then when you look at the seven bowls, they are really, really terrible judgments, honestly. Like a lot of animals dying, the water turning to blood. Um, it said the people deserve to drink blood because they had killed so many of the Lord's saints. Those bowls of wrath are so intense that I believe God is merciful enough that they don't last so long. That they're not going to be happening for years and years, but a, a shorter period of time. And also it falls in there is the battle of armageddon so i was thinking about that as well the battle of armageddon it has a lot of people there will be a lot of people killed but at the same time there will be other people in other parts of the earth so god's going to make it clear that his judgment has come for the people worldwide and also for the people at the battle of armageddon okay um this was obviously very broad and very open i did not go into a whole lot of specifics. I just wanted to keep this short and bring out the point that I wanted to bring, which is to encourage you to take a look again at the book of Revelation and see for yourself, study for yourself. If you think there could be a possibility of what I'm saying is true, if you find that it's true, I submit to you, it's really encouraging to kind of just relax and be like, okay, this is, this is happening. I feel in general that I can understand what's happening, what God is doing. Um, if that's not important for you to know, then that's really awesome. Uh, but for me, with a, such an analytical mind, it's it really bothers me sometimes to not know these types of things. And God guided Daniel and showed him many things, so I believe he's guiding us as well in these days. Remember the kingdom of God is like a man in search of fine pearls, and when he found a single pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. God bless.